Welcome to the Day at Indy on the Marshall Pruitt Podcast, brought to you by Cooper Tires and the Justice Brothers. Here we are, May 13th, Monday, one more day to go until things get loud. Practice starts for the 500. We have two guests today, one being Ricardo Junco, team owner of the number 32 Chevy to be driven by Kyle Kaiser, has some rough news, something that has certainly placed his entry in jeopardy, keeping in mind that they qualified effectively the middle of the field last year as a single car entry with a rookie driver, no technical alliance with anyone, some very impressive stuff. So they're coming back, trying to make his big a splash, if not more, with Kaiser once more. Not totally sure if they're going to be able to continue running if they do get into the show. So... I've actually been there myself in 1998. The deal we had done with a company by the name of Apelian Technologies based in Roanoke, Virginia. They had sponsored us with the Greg Ray Thomas Knapp Motorsports general racing entry at Phoenix. Actually paid us money. We received that money. I know that. I deposited the check. They promised to sponsor us to the tune of $250,000. For the 1998 Indy 500, that was our, effectively, one and only sponsor. That was going to cover the entire tab for us. Small team, small, very effective team. Didn't need a huge budget. Got the news from them. Well, let me rephrase that. Didn't so much get the news from them as we were genuinely and literally rolling into the speedway to unload and move into our garage. Got confirmation from the head of the company who had been telling us, telling me, oh, yeah, no, check is definitely in the mail. Here, got the tracking tracking number somewhere on my desk. But, oh, no, no, I sent it. It's there. It's coming. You're all good. Over and over and over again. One of the things about being a small team, it's not too much fun. You find yourself in that situation more than the bigger teams. And because you need that money so much to survive, you are willing to let someone string you along probably a little bit longer in the hope that that money is real and it's going to be there. Car showed up, was essentially all black uh, other than car number and driver name and I think the mandatory series stickers. It was a car in need of folks spending money. And so actually through that, one of the good folks that I met was Ed Justice Jr., of the Justice Brothers, who is now a sponsor of our podcast. He was one of the main companies that stepped up significantly, didn't know us, didn't have any connections to us, but did see that a team was in need. And the good old Justice Brothers, along with a number of other very fine people, stepped in to help, and we ended up qualifying second and leading the first, I don't know, I think 17 or 18 laps. And then the gearbox broke, and then we didn't go forward anymore in the race. But nonetheless know exactly where Ricardo has been, having had the same exact thing happen 20 plus years ago coming into the 500. So hope that things turn out well for him and Kyle. So that's where we start off. Then we close with our man Simon Pagano, who won Saturday's Indianapolis Grand Prix. I'd mentioned in Saturday's Day at Indy that I saw him after the race, said, hey, you know what your performance reminded me of? And he said, Senna. And I said, no, a classic Pagano drive. So he texted me last night with a little cut down clip of the 1993 Donington Grand Prix, uh, British Grand Prix, I should say, at Donington Senna's just mercurial drive in the rain to get into the lead. Definitely hailed as one of his all time greatest performances. So he uh, sent me that clip late last night and just mentioned that that was a inspiration for him in what he achieved on Saturday in the rain at Indy. So we said, hey, you know what? Let's talk about that. That's pretty cool. So got on the phone with Simon. Not exactly sure where he was driving, but got on the phone with him. So add in our closing segment here with Simon Pagano from Team Penske, who did some really good things in his day glow yellow Team Penske Chevy. So going to start off with our man, Ricardo Junkos. Then we'll roll into Simon, and then we will be done for the day. And the next time we will speak, it will be talking about 
the actual first day of on-track activity for the 103rd Indianapolis 500 here on the Marshall Pruitt Podcast, brought to you by Cooper Tires and the Justice Brothers. Ricardo Juncos, I love speaking with you about the really impressive things that you do with your motor racing team. Road to Indy, obviously success during the Indianapolis Grand Prix portion with your team. Uh, Success there, obviously, both Indy Pro 2000 and Indy Lights as well. Getting ready to go green here on Tuesday for the very first day of Indy 500 practice. Maybe not as happy. So despite lots of success as we expect in getting the drivers ready for IndyCar and Indy 500, your one car Indy 500 program for Kyle Kaiser, instead of coming in with that car dressed in all kinds of colors from sponsors and such, you've just found out one, if not two, that were going to help make the month of May possible have had to back out in the last minute. Tell us about that. That must be crushing. Does it end things for you? Do you keep going? No, no, obviously we're going to keep going, but, uh, as you mentioned, you know, we had this success in Road to Indy, and I had to, to, to learn and find a way to, to use that or keep that momentum and, and that, I think, uh, success um, story or system in, in IndyCar. And it's been difficult. I mean, we were lucky to win the Indy Light Championship with Kaiser on 17. Obviously, that was a big open door for us to, to do the Indy 500 last year. Um, and we qualified really, really good. 17th, 17th right? for Kyle's yeah. first race. One car team. Yes. No teammates get uh, technical info from. I mean, not overstating things. It was really impressive. Out qualified both both Ganassi cars. <laughs> I know, and, and and we obviously feel proud about ourselves, and we put a lot of effort on that. And that, I I thought at that time, okay, this is going to be good. So now I got to work based on this point to work already a year ahead of time for the 2019 Indy 500. And here you are, you know, like uh, like you mentioned. We unfortunately we we lost the the two main sponsors that we thought was going to happen. The the second one was just uh, last week. Um, but we are here, and you know, the car is ready, and Kyle is ready, the team is ready. It's just going to be a, a little bit white car, but uh, we're not going to lose the the motivation. We're going to keep pushing, and you never know, right? It's been stories that I found that maybe in the last two weeks, even the last week you may find something before the race. So we're going to focus, obviously, now it's time for the whole team to focus on, on practice, qualifying to make sure we, we perform as good as we did last year and, and build the momentum from there, you know. So that's the focus then. No guarantee on anything yet, but the only thing you can do, it sounds like, is, I guess, scrape together the funds you can. I, I don't want to ask if you're put, having to put in any of your own money, but it sounds like the goal is be faithful and remain committed to doing to being a part of the indy 500 to try and qualify but having to search for the funds to keep going if you can make it in the show no i think yes exactly i mean right now i think we we have i had one year to find the sponsors and i couldn't make it so it's not going to happen in two weeks so right now we are in um and we we committed and we're going to focus 100 percent on performance um, we really believe in ourselves. We believe that we have a good team, good driver. We just need to do a little better job than last year, and we should be okay. And you never know in racing. Anything can happen. We, even we can be out of the race, like happened with good drivers last year. So nobody has the ticket, you know, and this year is an extra car compared to last year. So we know how difficult it is. We, we learned a lot last year because that was my first experience having to, to get the risk to not be in the show. Um, I learned a lot over that, so we're going to try to, to to build from last year into this one, and hopefully we can do an even better job. Well, let's close on this, and this isn't exactly the uh, the super happy day at Indy report we're wanting to do here for a Monday, but what does this do for you and your team, mechanics, Kyle Kaiser, I'm guessing as well, from a pressure standpoint? It's one thing to come into the month of May as you mentioned there's an extra entry this year so there are 36 cars trying to qualify for 33 available spots three cars are going to go home we know that by the end of qualifying weekend that's already huge pressure what's it like adding on the fact that financially 
you're also now a day before the start of practice for the Indy 500, you're having to solve a pretty significant financial hurdle as well that could be a limiting factor as well. Yes, but uh, we're going to be ready 100%. We already are. I mean, the car is, is a better car than last year. So all my team, my mechanics, the engineers, the driver, they got to be focused 100%. The pressure of the money side is just my pressure. And I got to make sure my pressure is not interfering to the, to the sport side of the team, which is the performance and the race itself and qualifying and practice. So for me, uh, Tuesday start 500 very clean. Um, my issues with the money is my issues. It's not going to be the team issues. So I don't think it's an effect and shouldn't be an extra pressure because we're going to focus 100% like we always do. And the pressure is there, you know, and it's there for even last year when we did these races. I always try to find the, the budget properly to run a full-time program, but that's my pressure. I always try to not no, no interfere with the, with the sports side, which I think is what we've been doing anyway, even in the other programs. So... I'm, I'm not worried about that. I think we're going to be strong. I think we're going to be strong. We believe in ourselves, like I said, and we are confident for this Indy 500, to be honest, more than last year. Let's close on this, Ricky. So last year, the one of the day at Indy episodes we did, we did a longer one, I think about a half hour. One of the most popular things I ended up posting all year long because you shared your story of a kid coming here with you know, almost nothing in your pocket from Argentina uh, what was it? You had to repay your grandmother that little bit of, yes. of money she helped you when yes. you came here. You, know, you are, again, the living embodiment of the American dream. You have, through your team for many years, made this commitment to the road to Indy to develop the next generation. You've also made a massive commitment to IndyCar with two cars as well that you're capable of running. Give us your thoughts on this fight because you are trying to live all of that American dream, at least on the IndyCar side, it's not always given back. This sure as hell isn't easy, and it seems to be a frequent thing for you to try and get over that hurdle. What's that like? Yeah, it's, it's tough, but I, I knew it. And I, I said the first time going to 2017, this is really, really, really difficult, and I, I take the challenge. I cannot expect to be that easy. This is the top level, in my opinion, on the world. I mean, IndyCar is, in my heart, is, is, is better and is better show than Formula One. So, no question on that. And it's the oldest in the history, right? How many years in the 500? More than Formula One by far. So, we're talking about the top level in the planet. And I just come with, with nothing, right? And I cannot expect other than to be so difficult for me. So, it's fine. Everything is, what is happening actually is what I predicted. So I, I said maybe it took us five to seven years to win a race. This is what I really believe. So I'm okay. And it's been only two Indy 500. So really, it's really right two months before the Indy 500 on 17, we, we acquired the team. So it's been, what, a year and a half in Indica? It's going to be two years now in, in May, right? Uh, yes, two years. It's a short time. So this is just the beginning. You know, when I came from Argentina, I was a go-kart mechanic. Two years later, I just have a small go-kart team. So it takes time. These things take time. So that's why I know how difficult it was for me, the challenge that I had to go through in life. So this is another one. And I'm, that's why I'm patient. And I know one day it's going to happen. And we'll be OK. We love you, Ricardo Juncos, for real. Despite facing more challenges than any other team owner you do actually have a genuine smile on your face right now i know you're not looking forward to all the the hard nights ahead but uh there's some others who might be just really down drinking heavily right now trying to drown their sorrows so your spirit is obviously a key element to why you have gone from being a go-kart mechanic to an indy 500 team owner and now you're just having to put in more work to make sure that this dream continues Oh, thank you, Marshall. Really good words. Um, I can't thank you enough. You've always been supporting and, you know, it's been a lot of years and everybody said that to me. For me, I'm, I'm someone else, like my mechanics. I always try to feel the same way. I don't feel nothing special. I'm just a guy, crazy guy that loves racing, never stop working. And I smile because I, I seriously take life. Uh, I enjoy life. And I always do things with a lot of passion and we have to be happy. 
if you're not happy doing something, that means something is not right and you gotta stop doing it. That's my philosophy. That's why I always wanna smile in the good moments, in the bad moments. You know, you always have a rematch in, in racing in life, actually. So that's who I am and we're just gonna keep pushing. I'm very, very comfortable for this and confident for this Indy 500. Simon Pagano, super awesome to see you get back into the win column. I know that after the race, you shared with me that there was a certain inspiration you were carrying with you on Saturday, especially when the rain started to fall. Wasn't a crazy torrential downpour kind of thing, but rain management, rain tires, car control, all those things made a huge difference in your ability to win yet another Indianapolis Grand Prix. Who and what was going through your mind, though, while you were out there chasing down Scott Dixon for the win in terms of motivation? Well, the motivation, um, determination was very, very high. Um, you know, I love the rain. I've always loved driving in the rain, and every time it rains, I feel like it's uh, it's an ally. I feel like it's uh, it's a good luck charm. You know, it's, uh, it's something that I enjoy. It's something where... Uh, it's a phenomenon where I feel, you know, you can extract a little bit more than the others if you do a good job. And if the car responds well, you really have a, a, a chance to make a big difference. And obviously, um, you know, my my big inspiration in racing has always been Elton Senna, who, uh, who was tremendous in these kind of conditions. So, uh, you know, obviously, I studied a lot of how he was driving in the rain. And uh, I tried to emulate the way he drives in the rain by... Uh, you know, doing similar things and it seemed to pay off really well yesterday. I, I, I wouldn't like to compare myself to him at all. It, I, I think it would be very pretentious, but uh, I, um, you know, it was uh, it was an incredible, incredible situation yesterday. I had a great car also, which which really helped my performance. But uh, I uh, I just felt like to, yesterday was my time and, and I seized the opportunity um, when I felt, uh, I kind of smelt blood at one point and I went for it. In watching your your drive and your performance, one thing that stood out, especially when you were you, Jack Harvey, Scott Dixon, and others were having to manage the rain, the reduction in rain, being on rain tires and not wanting to burn them down, I think folks saw a lot of you looking for those patches of wet on the track to try and cool your tires. But when it comes to cornering, you have the traditional approach to rain of trying to run off the normal dry line the dry line where cars are normally cornering wears down the track a little bit isn't as much grip coming from the track surface so often look to run a little bit offline to pick up grip where the track does have a finer ability to hold on to the tires was seeing some of those who you're chasing down really sticking to that approach running off line a bit very interesting to note that you started running more of the traditional dry line at times before some others. It seemed to be a part of what helped you pick up a half second per lap on someone. There were times, man, when you were picking up two seconds per lap on Dixon. <laughs> Share with us about this, trying to channel your inner Senna. Use what you might have learned or observed from him over the years watching videos and such because you weren't always doing the traditional thing and it really paid off. Yeah, I mean, I you know I've noticed definitely noticed from Senna that he was always searching, always uh, looking for uh, you know grippy grippy places on the racetrack. I think the rain when you drive in the rain, it's it's all about uh, being curious and and understanding where the grip is and uh, finding confidence in the grip level. Uh, you know, it's so treacherous in the rain. It's the 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 grip is very reduced, but um, but you can find patches and places where there's more grip and it helps you corner quicker than others. Um, it helps you set up the exit better as well and, and throttle better. Um, definitely yesterday, the biggest thing for me is I was only focused on the moment. I never thought about anything else than winning the race. I never thought about settling uh, where I was. I, I just was going forward and I told Kyle Moyer before the restart, I said, let's just We'll talk strategy later. Then I'm just going to go forward. Um, you know, it was very much one of those moments I had where I was just focused on the moment, and my goal was to go forward. So we did that, and um, you know, it's obviously one thing to say it; it's another thing to do it. Obviously, 
uh, yesterday everything just aligned perfectly. You know, the stars were there, a little bit of um, luck because the race car was perfect and I drove my, my A plus game and uh, it all worked out really well. So um proud to say that uh, I've been preaching it all year long that we were right there and uh, proud to say that we showed it today, yesterday. So that's that's fantastic. And you said that to me, I mean, I, I think from the very earliest outset, just in testing before the first round there was just something where you felt hey this is going to be a good year talk about working with your long-term friend and race engineer ben bretzman as well who also celebrated a birthday yesterday uh or saturday i should say along with celebrating a win that has to feel pretty good knowing what the two of you have accomplished once more but also knowing that good old big ben had a, a pretty awesome birthday gift Thanks to, thanks to good old yeah. Simon Pagano. Yeah, it was great to uh, give him that gift for sure. Um, you know, obviously, uh, it's always awesome to race on your birthday, but uh, being able to bring a win, uh, another win to Ben with everything that we've gone through was, was phenomenal. But also the whole Team Penske, you know, we, we, we struggled a bit this weekend with pure speeds more so than anything else, and we're able to find that in the race. And these guys never give up. And I have to say... You know, also last year, we, it was a bit of a struggle uh, to find the right uh, behavior for the car. Um, they really did everything they could to provide me what I needed over the winter. And, and as you can see, and we talked about it, this year is very different. Like I feel every race is, I feel like we have a chance. The thing is, it's very tight. The, the, the competition is amazing. Everybody's on it and everybody's uh, has understood these cars pretty well. So the margin for error is, is tiny. Um, one tenth of a second can be full position on the grid. So, um, what used to be uh, five tenths of a second was a big deal. Now we're talking about one tenth of a second. So, uh, you know, obviously you need to be pretty much perfect to win a race. But um, coming back to um, to Ben and, and the Team Penske, it's just um, it's just phenomenal to get a win under our belt so early in the season because. I believed it since um, St. Petersburg. I, I believe we would be fighting for the championship this year. Um, and it's just good to be able to showcase our speed right away and, and, and our strength again. Let's close on this, Simon. So you told me before we started recording, it's been a busy morning, and it's not because of a massive hangover on your end. Uh, it's because you've had so many texts to respond to and congratulatory messages <laughs> Just share some thoughts on the warmth and celebration that's coming back your way from those who are happy to see you get back to where uh, we know you belong in Victory Lane. And also maybe share just the reaction with a Roger Penske, Tim Sindrick, and others seeing you deliver the victory here as we head into the Indy 500. Well, first of all, Marshall, you know, it's, it's pride. I think, you know, winning a race for Tim Penske... When you drive for them, you 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 expect, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say you're expected, but you expect as a driver to win races and win championship for them because they provide you the best equipment they can give you. So you know you know they're doing everything they can, and it's your job to do everything you can to do the same thing for them. Um, so winning is a big reward for everybody, whether it's you, uh, for yourself, or for the team, for the crew, for the engineer. Uh, for the sponsors, it's um, it's it's fantastic to be able to provide them that. And like I just said earlier, it's becoming harder and harder to do so on a consistent basis because of uh, the strength in the series. Now, you know, we're pretty much in a spec series, so obviously um, it's going to get harder and harder to win races. But um, yes, uh, having Roger Penske come to me uh, in Victoria Lane and, and being so excited for me and for for uh, for us because you know what it's a common goal it's not my goal only it's the team's goal it's roger's goal it's my goal to win races it's Cindric's goal as well and uh, when one of the driver does it it's um it's an amazing feeling and um you know winning races is what we work on we lose more than we win in racing um and, and being being able to see the smile on roger's face um Cindric come up to me on the podium and being ecstatic as well was was definitely uh, a bigger reward than the trophy itself quite frankly